Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. I'm Katya and today's book talk looks at Violets by Kyung Suk Shin. This was published in South Korea 21 years ago in 2001. It was translated by Anton Her and published in English in April this year. This is one of the four books I focused on for Women in Translation Month this August. And Violets begins with the birth of an unwanted daughter or son. Now, she is unwanted purely because she is a girl, ostracized by the community around her for reasons that become known as the book progresses. Sun's only friend later goes on to reject her too, which is the in the book summary and the opening chapters. All of this leaves an impression on Sun being abandoned time and time again. The story then really picks up when Sun is now 22, struggling to find her place in Seoul and stumbling into a job at a flower shop. And her experiences as a child and a teenager just really stick with her very strongly. She is one of those characters that thinks things over and she sort of gets into this feedback loop. The job at the flower shop felt like a potential turning point as a reader. And she formed this rapid friendship with a female colleague. So it felt really positive. But I will give you the heads up that this is not a book with lighthearted moments. It is a bleak novel about the unseen or invisible women in a highly patriarchal society. As a character, Orsan seems to have a fragility closer to that of a little girl than a grown woman. And that isn't something that is apparent to people around her. And you are privy to it as a reader, I think. In some ways, she remains in stasis, or it felt like it, um, letting those experiences that shaped her uh, in her childhood and teens really take over. In the summer, because it's a short period of time that this book is set in, she starts to think about two men, develops an obsession about one in particular, but there is one that also pursues her. The pacing is difficult to describe other than it is really, really slow until you get to like the end section and then suddenly it takes off so, so quickly and ends abruptly. So I wasn't a fan of that sort of pacing. The plot also is difficult to describe in that very little actually happens. I don't think it's a sort of read for everyone. But I found it weirdly beautiful and insightful. Bleak, yes, but also alive in the strangest way. Alive in a heavy, oppressive way like the soil surrounding the roots of a plant. And all the while, you have that sense that too much sun or water will have a detrimental effect. Sun is the delicate plant and she can't have conditions shift on her too suddenly. And I'm using really poor plant metaphors to describe sun because the book is heavy on symbolism. As a reader, don't feel obligated to decipher the symbols because, like I say, it's heavy with them. And they are um, key themes that are evident. So you can just focus on the key themes without having to dive into things. But if you like to identify and interpret symbols, then there are so many for you to look at. Um, It's filled with them. There's so much more than meets the eye. On a whim, I decided to look up the meaning of nearly every single plant in this book, and I wasn't disappointed. Kyung Suk Shin used specific plants to emphasize the tone of her chapters. The book summary makes it clear that this story will center on a woman who has, from the start, been an uncelebrated girl. So, we don't actually need to know that the yellow chrysanthemums in chapter one symbolize neglected love and sorrow. But can you imagine how excited I was when I looked it up and realized that's what it stood for? Because it emphasizes exactly what the back cover and chapter one were telling us. Chrysanthemums have a positive connotation in pretty much every other color, but not in yellow. And that attention to detail is throughout the book. So it definitely feels like a labor of love on the part of the author. I also recommend that if you've finished reading this book, you could go back to the section where Osan looks up the definition of violets. And there's a specific reason for that, evident in the actual narrative of why she looks that up. Note how some words were defined before and after violets in the dictionary and how they then feature to a greater and lesser degree in the in the story. So they're all in the plot. Um, 
And I thought that's really well thought out and well crafted. Just attention to detail that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Is it needed? <laughs> like I say, I don't think so. It is one of those things where, um, yeah, it's probably just like an Easter egg in a video game. Violets has a slow, oppressive feel throughout, and yet I found myself engaged from start to finish. I don't recommend it to everyone because it deals with mental illness, physical illness, confusing urges, loneliness, violence, and more. So I would say steer away from it if you're trying to stay away from things that are likely to depress you. Some readers may feel as well that the story heads in a predictable direction, and I don't know whether that is you know, so much a valid criticism. Obviously, everyone's criticism is valid. But for me, it was actually less a question of the destination and more about thinking about each of the scenes and then deconstructing and reconstructing them as we're going along. So as a reader, we find ourselves reflecting on how the societal issues play their part. How much agency does someone like Osan have in her world as a woman? And that gets you pondering, not just about her story, but also about the story of her mother and her flatmate. And in our own lives, we might consider it from our experiences or the experiences of our mothers and sisters and just the women in our lives. I'm glad that this book also included a three-page afterward by the author in which she reflects on the time period in which she'd written it because it's, you know, time has passed. But she also talks about her inspiration for the book and her main character. So if you're an afterward skipper, you might actually like to read this one because it does feel, you know, short and intimate, like a conversation with the author. In terms of style, when compared to Shin's other books, I think the ending could have been smoother. Um, so that's my, my main criticism because I didn't like how abrupt it all was. And I think that's about the time that's, you know, passed since um, she's written all of these other books in the meantime, which I've read and they just felt, they felt different. They felt smooth. And this one, you know, just suddenly sprung on me this ending. But anyway, I'm the one who said the ending is less the worry and it's more about the journey. So I'll stick with that. Violet is currently rated 3.69 on Goodreads. And although I like my reads less emotionally heavy and I wanted a different ending, I still rate Violet four stars. Do let me know in the comments if you've read this one, if you intend to read it and what your thoughts are. Thanks so much for joining me and take care. Bye.